The Denver Broncos desperately need more playmakers on the offensive side of the ball, especially if they add a young quarterback to the mix. We talk about why it's important for Sean Payton to build the offense on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode of Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much once again to all the everydayers out there in Broncos country for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day every single day. Just a reminder, you can get this podcast for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. So if you haven't done so already, do us a favor. Hit that subscribe or that follow button down below so you never miss out on a day's worth of Broncos news, content coverage, analysis, and more in the build-up to the NFL Draft. I'm Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports. Joined alongside, as always, by Sarah Bettinger, site expert, predominantlyorange.com. Playmakers, Sarah. I mean, there used to be a really good show back in the day called Playmakers, but on top of that, you know, the Broncos, they need to add some playmakers to the mix, right? They're, they got to be the producers. They need a supporting cast of actors to help this offense take the next step in Sean Payton's offense, where, look, the pressure is going to be on Sean this year to make sure that the offense is better. While we look back in 2023 and say, okay, hey, Denver's offense was drastically better than it was in 2022, they have to be even more consistently better this upcoming season because everybody around the NFL, they're getting better. Defenses are getting stronger. Other teams are having offenses formulated that could put up points, and that's something that the Broncos simply haven't been able to do. And, gosh, it feels like eight years that's been the case. It really has. I mean, you talk about this past season for Denver. Of course, it was a great year for Cortland Sutton, maybe the best of his NFL career. But I found it kind of crazy looking back at the numbers from last season. The top three players on the Denver Broncos in 2023 in total touches as of last season, Cody, this is not a this is not made up people. Javante Williams, Jaleel McLaughlin and Samaj P. Ryan. Those are the top three in terms of total touches now. I would challenge anybody to go out there and find me a really good NFL team whose top three running backs are also leading the team in touches. The Broncos just didn't have enough in terms of anybody that could really prove to be a high volume target in the passing game. Now, Greg Dulcich being injured factored into that. You know, you had Jerry Judy not really consistent as far as his involvement in the offense or at least you know the quarterback not seeing him when he's open and and Cortland Sutton has never really been this high volume kind of guy he's always been that x receiver who plays the vertical game really well the you know as we call him the 60 40 because it's never 50 50 when you throw it at Cortland Sutton he's always coming down with that ball but that's the Broncos don't really have a high volume target in the passing game and so I think when we're talking about weapons offensively we're back to this discussion that we were in maybe back in uh, 2017, 2018, where the Broncos really need to add some juice at the offensive skill spots. And they really do. They, they don't have a ton of team speed offensively right now other than Marvin Mims. And you have guys that have been injury prone or guys that haven't played a lot the last two years, or guys that haven't produced up to their draft status or contract status. So, Cody, to me, this is an area of the team that's been lacking for some time, and I'm fascinated to see how Sean Payton continues to attack it after using his top pick last year on a guy like Marvin Mims. Probably one of the areas on the offensive side of the ball that has bigger question marks, right? Like you, We see potential in Marvin Mims. We know Cortland can obviously produce. There's other guys we'll talk to about, obviously, Tim Patrick, but Brandon Johnson, is he going to be a guy that's going to have a bigger role this upcoming season, or is, is Denver need to add guys to the position? I think there's valid points as to why but also factoring into the playmaker conversation we saw guys make plays at receiver we didn't see a lot of guys make plays at the tight end position and to me this is the biggest uncertain area that Denver has on their offensive roster side of things because we just don't know what you're going to get right the hope is that Greg Dulcich will be healthy but we're not banking on the fact that he is going to remain healthy because we simply haven't had anything to give us that inclination even though it's been a frustrating element for Greg himself he wants to stay healthy, but there's pressure mounting on him to be able to put together a full season to be able to see if he can be a part of what the Broncos want to do going forward, whether that's with a new quarterback or somebody else. Denver just didn't get production at that position overall. They're bringing Adam Troutman back, but he's not designed to be your number one tight end option. He's not going to be a top receiving threat here. And it kind of leads credence here to what I'm about to say. Like Lucas Crow, as we talk about, continues to maybe be in the best position overall in a room full of uncertainty and question marks. I feel like Lucas could be this one guy here, six foot six, 
250 plus pounds can run really blazing fast speed for the position in my opinion is probably the only guy on the roster right now outside of Dulcich that has the makeup to be a really consistent pass catching option for the Broncos at the position and in my opinion I'm still not sold on the room from this standpoint that's where I'm concerned about the playmaking standpoint because as you mentioned earlier when your running backs are leading the team in overall touches and targets in the passing game there in comparison to your tight end room that is a huge problem and that cannot be the status quo for Sean Payton's offense going into his second season as the team's head coach and signal caller. It can't. You need outlets in the passing game at the tight end position, especially if you're going to move to a young quarterback. Or even if it is Jarrett Stidham, for that matter, Cody, you've got to have guys at the tight end position that can produce in the passing game. That's just that's Adam Troutman. There's a certain ceiling to which we talk a lot about raising the floor in areas of this Broncos roster. I think there's a ceiling with Adam Troutman as a receiver, as a, as a weapon in the passing game. There's definitely a limit to what he can do there that we've seen over the course of his NFL career. Now, Greg Dulcich is the biggest wild card in this because if the Broncos can get even 14 games out of Dulcich, which would be asking a lot. I know he played 10 in his rookie season. He appeared in just a couple last year. But man, if you could get 14 games out of Dulcich, I think your offense is going to take it to the next level in terms of the overall passing game. And Lucas Kroll is intriguing. We talked about free agency in the lead up to free agency. Man, the Broncos could go after Hunter Henry, maybe a reunion with Noah Fant, or maybe take a shot on Mike Gesicki. Like none of that happened. And the free agent market at tight end has completely dried up. That well is completely, it's completely dry. There's nothing left. So it's what the Broncos have plus the NFL draft and maybe some trades that we haven't yet looked into very much that maybe there's, there's something out there that they could look at. But to me, I, I, I like this Lucas Kroll option. I know that in certain areas of this roster, I'm not really in favor of the Broncos just, okay, you know, next man up or roll with the guy that, you know, the young guy who's unproven and the unknown commodity at the position. But Lucas Kroll is one of those guys, Cody, that you mentioned it, the size, the speed, he showed off the playmaking ability last year, although I'm not necessarily going to be drafting him as the tight end one of a, a fantasy team next season. I think maybe there's a chance that he could be one of the more underrated potential additions into this weaponry moving forward. And that's something that the Broncos have to ask themselves internally. What is the plan? Are they OK with just running it back with Greg Dulcich, Adam Troutman, Lucas Kroll and Nate Adkins? That right there, I think on paper, it just doesn't sound like that should be the room entirely. You need to add pieces there. And hey, Denver is going to have plenty of opportunities in the NFL draft to maybe look at some guys with some high upside here. We'll take a look at some of those options here. But it's also important that if you were going to go with a young quarterback in this year's NFL draft, surrounding him with young talent is especially important, especially when you have eight picks Overall, could the Broncos front load this year's NFL draft with offensive playmakers with some of their eight picks? We'll dive deeper to that and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked On Broncos. Today's Locked On Broncos podcast is brought to you by our friends over there at FanDuel Sportsbook. As you all know, it America's number one sportsbook. You know what? It's March. The weather is getting a lot warmer out there, but college hoops is at its peak because there's a lot of madness going on as teams are looking down to cut down the net in a national championship game. So say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book because right now new customers, they get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. If you place a $5 bet after signing up with FanDuel Sportsbook and that bet wins, you're automatically going to be awarded $200 in bonus bets and you can use that on point spreads, on money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all here in the month of March. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Once again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. It's going to be crucial for the Denver Broncos to surround their quarterback position with playmakers at every position offensively. And although they can't get it done in one fell swoop, the 2024 NFL draft is going to be an opportunity to load up and take some dart throws on the offensive skill positions. Cody and I are going to break that down and why maybe, maybe. Broncos could go with an offensive skill player other than quarterback in round one. We've seen some mock draft scenarios out there lately that are exploring this idea. But 
want to say thank you to every single one of you that make Locked On Broncos your first listen of the day every single day right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, free and available everywhere that you listen to podcasts, as well as on YouTube, where we appreciate every single one of you that subscribes, that likes the show, that you put us in your algorithm, and you got the you got the notification bell turned on so you know anything that comes up with the Denver Broncos. Cody and I, we're going to pop up right on your homepage as soon as you log in. And hey, today we're talking about playmakers in the NFL draft. Let us know what you think about playmaker options in round one. This is probably one of the biggest strengths of the 2024 NFL draft, especially at the top, Cody, isn't it? When we talk about playmakers, I mean, Marvin Harrison Jr., uh, Odunze from Washington, Malik Neighbors from LSU, Brock Bowers of Georgia as well. This is not a running back heavy draft. This is a wide receiver and and quarterback and offensive skill guys up top. We see a lot of these guys in the top 10 of mock drafts. Give me your thoughts on this, Cody. When you talk about uh, surrounding a young quarterback with talent, we see this, this difference of opinion in Broncos country a lot. It's like, well, don't draft the playmakers. You don't have a quarterback yet. And the other side is like, why would you draft a quarterback when you don't have the offensive skill players to surround them with? So where do you land in this mm-hmm. argument or does it really matter to you what order you go in? I mean, you got to start somewhere, right? If you're going to build an offense, you're going to have to just build with the pieces that you have. And I think right now, Denver offensive line wise, their offensive line is intact for the most part, right? Which is better. I think some situations around the NFL. Now you have some veteran security blanket options, right? You have a Cortland Sutton, you have a Tim Patrick, these guys, if healthy, you know, you're going to get valuable production. We still don't know what Marvin Mims can be, though we've seen some flashes if he's used properly and if he's targeted. We know what Marvin can do. We like to see less end arounds and jet sweeps with him because I think it's very easy to see that the Denver Broncos cannot run that play effectively. We can't see the tailback screens run effectively by the Broncos offense. So in my opinion, I think you have to add some young players around them. We've talked a little bit about the tight end position with Greg Dulcich. We talked about Lucas Kroll, but... If you add a player who is, I think in today's NFL, in today's game, it's very hard because of how the college game is played where you see a lot of these tight end options that are the top tier guys. You don't see a lot of them play with their hand in the dirt most of the time. A lot of them are are spent flexed out inside the slot or on the outside, which is great, but you need a guy that can maybe do a little bit of everything. And I think that's how the game, the position has changed itself. But for a young player, you look at maybe adding more wide receivers around guys that are young and Maybe in a situation like the Broncos are in this year, you take the chance on adding young guys who maybe are going to have some different experiences. But I I think that ideally, if you're looking to add a veteran every time, like how many times have the Broncos went the veteran option? Has it really produced big time results for them? No, like they've had a lot of homegrown guys over the years. They've had the Demarius Thomases. They had, you know, you bring in Emmanuel Sanders, who finds a little bit of rejuvenation in his career with Denver. And then aside from that, like you bring in Cortland Sutton in 2018, he's a role player while those guys are the household names. So ideally, I think the Broncos should be in this position to look at it from that standpoint. You have the household names in Cortland Sutton and Tim Patrick. Now you need to bring in young guys who, I mean, ideally you can think maybe will be eventual replacements for them, but you need guys that can maybe thrive in a role player role while those guys are the featured guys in the offense. To me, I think that's how you accelerate and maybe see what player development can be And if there are certain things that you ask these guys to do that are younger, that are coming in, that, hey, they're starting to do this and they're picking up quicker, it may just accelerate that plan. And you may have some emerging young players at a position of need there for the Broncos when we talk about playmakers. And you have a young quarterback. You get these guys on rookie contracts. You have window room to make moves that can help build this team even further in the next couple of years. Well, let's talk about one of these playmakers that the Broncos could be building around, right? I mean, Brock Bowers from Georgia, he's certainly come up quite a bit in mock draft scenarios recently. And when you see this pop up, I I think it's easy to kind of see both sides of the coin. On the one hand, it's like, how could the Broncos take a tight end when they may have long-term you know, concerns right now at, at quarterback or wide receiver or defensive line, cornerback, offensive tackle? How could they take a tight end with that in mind? And I think that's a very valid point. On the other hand, it's like, well, shoot, he may be the best non-quarterback in this draft. And that's really high praise given the other guys that are available. But Brock Bowers is a guy who came up in Daniel Jeremiah's latest mock draft. Cody, I've seen him in a number of other mock drafts to Denver. And Daniel Jeremiah had an interesting comparison. He said that in Sean Payton's offense, 
he would envision Bowers playing the same role as a Michael Thomas. So he's not even thinking of him as, as you talk about this guy who may have his hand in the dirt at times and, you know, be a receiver at other times. He seems to be talking about Bowers as a high volume pass catching target as a bordering on just a, a bigger, you know, big slot at the tight end position or a bigger receiver option. I'm fascinated by the Bowers discussion because it does bring up the the cart. Is it the cart before the horse or what is it with this guy? But he is so good after the catch. He's one of those playmakers that he is. He just has such a, a feel for how to like a George Kittle type situation mm -hmm. where it's like the guy gets the ball and he he hits the open field he knows how to make guys miss he knows how to create yardage after the catch that could be ideal for any quarterback the broncos would put out there and maybe sean payton's looking at a guy like bowers and thinking to himself man i could roll with jarrett Sidham if i've got offensive if i've got creators offense creators like this guy i can just get him the ball and scheme ways to get him the ball and we're going to be cooking offensively well, and, and also maybe it opens things up that maybe Denver looks at it next year in terms of QB. Like we've had this conversation earlier in the week, locked on Broncos. We've looked at, okay, hey, if Denver goes round one, who are the potential guys they could look at? If they decide to roll with Jarrett Stidham for a year, could that be an option? And I think that is a very, very realistic scenario here. And it also goes to the discussion because there's, there's a debate, right? And, and I think a lot of people know how I feel on it, but do you go with you know your biggest need or do you go with best player available? Now, depending on how the board really falls for the Broncos, if the guy that they want at quarterback, let's say, gets taken or is not there, then ideally they can look at, okay, who's the best player available that we feel like we can add this guy? And then if we address quarterback later, that guy's going to have a really good piece. The conversation here is Brock Bowers at that position because of his work as a Georgia Bulldog. All the traits that you just mentioned there, the size, the athleticism, the speed, the ability yard after the catch, the ability to get open, those are key metrics here I think that Sean is looking for in his offense, which I think would be like, you know, hey, we understand that we're making, we're building the foundation of what we want offensively. And while we understand quarterback is probably very, very important, the most important position you can have can the guy that you have at quarterback maximize that look? I look at what Jarrett Stidham did with the Las Vegas Raiders. Look at who he had around him, right? He had Devontae Adams. He had a Hunter Renfro. He had Darren Waller in that game, and he lit up the San Francisco 49ers. So if you have the good pieces around him, Jarrett Stidham, I think, can do those things that you want from an offensive standpoint. And I think that there's some intrigue in terms of a discussion that we've also had, Cody, about the Broncos maybe looking at multiple quarterbacks in this draft. And I I'm one of those people that I'm I'm on board this Spencer Rattler train. So hear me out on it on this. When you're talking about best player available, you're talking about taking the most talented guys early. I mean, I mean, I think of a scenario of maybe Brock Bowers in round one and then Spencer Rattler there in round three. And and let's just say Sean Payton and the Broncos, they don't love any of the the, the guys that are going to be available at pick number 12. And they're looking at that scenario and they're saying, even if we trade down. We don't necessarily love a Penix or a Bo Nix here. That may end up being the case. Let's say they love Spencer Rattler, just not as a first round guy. Let's say they love him as a third round guy or a late second round guy. Are you are you open to that idea? Do you think Broncos country would be open to a guy like Spencer Rattler? Let's say the Broncos move into the back end of round two to get a guy like Rattler after taking Brock Bowers in round one. Is that a scenario that you think is viable for this team, because I mean, that's a that would be again a tough sell, similar to selling Jarrett Stidham for a year. It'd be tough to sell a late second round guy, but if that's the guy that Sean Payton wants, that could be fast. That could be a fascinating scenario for Denver here. Like a, a Eric Manthe, one of my good friends who we talk with quite a bit, he he was suggesting like maybe there's a Seahawks 2012 type of scenario here where you've got a Matt Flynn already on the roster. And this draft brings you your Russell Wilson, right? Back, back when the Seahawks got Russell, it was like, man, there's so much wrong. He's too small. He's too this. What if you have a similar scenario this year where you're able to get a guy like Bowers in round one and Rattler near round three? It'd be very, very interesting. And it goes to the point as well of what Sean said. Like, it doesn't matter where we think people think we should go. If we like a player, we're going to do it. And it doesn't matter if that's round one at pick number 12. It doesn't matter if it's trading up in a round two, whatever it may be. It sounds like the Broncos... The guys that they're going to pick, they're, they, they're going to have conviction about, and they don't care what we think about it. They don't care what the fans think about it, which ultimately, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Like We we have opinions. We have things that we obviously have to talk about. We're going to look at every side of the coin. But ultimately, it's about how the team feels, not how we feel, not how the fans feel about a player. 
And I think that's where we have to understand, like that's where trust and patience comes into the conversation. We all have to have it in our roles exclusively, whether we're media members, whether we're fans, whatever it may be, patience has to be at the forefront here for the Broncos. Cause if they're taking a guy, there's a reason why. And they're, if they're taking a guy, they did that exactly last year in the NFL draft. There's a reason they moved up, even though right now we kind of question some of the picks that they did make in last year's NFL draft Broncos country. How do you feel about that? Let us know on today's episode, locked on Broncos, where our conversation continues about adding offensive arsenal to the mix. Could the Broncos go after tight end or wide receiver early? We've talked about some of the options. We also weigh the pros and cons, maybe why that may or may not be a good option for them on today's brand new episode. Locked on Broncos. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's the first thing that you would do if you had an extra hour in your day to do whatever it is that you want? Would you catch up on maybe your favorite show? Would you go for a run, a jog, go for a walk as the weather outside is getting a lot more beautiful? Time is a very interesting concept, and a lot of us spend our lives wishing that we had more of it. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and to make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so that you can do more of it. I've utilized BetterHelp therapy in the past. I did it last year. And with the benefit I found from it, as easy to sign up. You fill out a form, and you get matched to a licensed therapist within minutes, and then you schedule your first session. I sat down with my therapist. Her and I hit it off really well, so it was great. We were able to work on some tools, some skill building that helped me you know, deal with the anxiety that I have, the stress that I have, and on top of other things, realize what's important to me. And I could do it all from the convenience of my own home. But if you don't vibe well with your therapist that you get matched to, you can change therapists at any time at no additional cost. So that's obviously a very important thing. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and best of all, suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. As we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, we'll debate the pros and cons of maybe adding a wide receiver, a tight end early on in the NFL draft. We'll take a look at where the team is at and where they can move going forward here on today's brand new episode of the show. Real quick, I want to say thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day every single day, especially all you everydayers out there in Broncos country. Sarah, we've talked about, obviously, Daniel Jeremiah's latest mock draft with Brock Bowers. We shared our thoughts on that. Broncos country has shared their thoughts on that. You take a look at some of the wide receiver prospects in this year's draft as well. Malik Neighbors, obviously Marvin Harrison Jr., uh, Roma Dunze out of Washington. These seem to be kind of those top three wide receivers in this year's NFL draft. And part of me is wondering, like, if Denver's there at 12 and one of those guys is available, is that something that the Broncos should do? Because I think we have to factor in Tim Patrick's back on a one-year restructured deal. Portland Sutton is on the, really going to be on the final year of his deal in Denver. And then you have Marvin Mims, who's really going to have an accelerated role in his second season. Aside from that, you don't have really any long-term guarantees at the receiver position here going forward, which I think is very interesting, especially for the Broncos situation and where they're at, considering that Marvin Mims was not a first-round pick. The time is also ticking on his contract as well. And I just don't think you could pass on any one of those guys that you mentioned if they were sitting there at number 12 overall. Now, with every mock draft scenario that we see, it just doesn't feel likely that the Broncos will be in that position. But remember, back in 2020, when there was, you know, Jerry Judy and C.D. Lamb and all these guys, like nobody thought it was we were all debating like, well, the Broncos aren't going to have anybody left to choose from. So are they going to take a first round receiver? Because all those guys are going to be off the board by the time they pick. You always assume before the draft that everybody's going to be off the board until you get there. And it's like the unpredictable craziness happens. And then all of a sudden you're sitting there and you could take a, a neighbors or a Dunze or maybe Marvin Harrison. You could trade up for one of those guys. Even I would definitely, especially if they're sitting there, Cody, I would take them. If they're sitting there at pick number eight or nine overall, you might even consider moving up for one of these guys. They are game changing playmakers. And of course the debate comes back into play. Well, you don't have a quarterback yet. So why would you take a wide receiver? You don't have the quarterback. I get the, I understand where people are coming from with that, but I just think like you mentioned before, when you have the opportunity to get great players, you've got to take that opportunity and, and build your roster the best way, get the best possible players on your team and don't force feed everything when it, you know, you don't have to necessarily take a, 
uh, Michael Penix Jr. over a Romo Dunze. I wouldn't do that necessarily. I mean, I mean, unless the Broncos believe he can be a franchise quarterback, it's it's clear which which tier one of these prospects is on versus the other. So, and I just think I, I meant to mention this before, Cody, as we talk about surrounding young guys, but look how important it's been around the league for young quarterbacks to get the the support of of skilled players. And even if we're just talking about Jarrett Stidham right now. Look at what wonders it's done for Joe Burrow to have Jamar Chase and for for Jalen Hurts to have A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. And then obviously you have other situations all around the league in terms of wide receivers and skill players helping out young quarterbacks. Look at Brock Purdy's situation. I mean, the, the 49ers didn't have quarterbacks settled and they obviously went after playmaker after playmaker. You know, Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, George Kittle. They trade for Christian McCaffrey. I mean, they've had all these different playmakers and you could have easily argued the same thing. Well, they don't have a quarterback, so why are they making these moves? It's like as soon as they figured out the quarterback, as soon as they get a guy that that can work in their system, oh my gosh, all these playmakers, now it's like you've built the best ro- – you've assembled the Avengers of the NFL. So I think building out the best roster possible is going to benefit the quarterback no matter if we have him on the roster now, no matter if he's going to be drafted in round one, two, three, four, five, or no matter if it's coming next year. Yeah, and and I also think as well, how does this we, we look at receiver, let's look at tight end, let's also look at running back as well, right? Javante's running into a contract year. Samaje signed a two-year deal initially. His contract after this season is gonna be up. Jaleel McLaughlin's an undrafted rookie free agent. There's also the consensus too that this year's tight end class, this year's running back class isn't necessarily the greatest. Where I feel you can add value. Like, for example, you know me, I'm an Oregon Ducks fan, right? Bucky Irving is a guy that I feel like could he be available late round two? Could he be available early round three? Right? Denver's going to have capital to move up into late round two if they want to, similar to what they did with Marvin Mims last season. It, you don't necessarily want to spend first round capital, I think, on tight end or that, unless it's like the Brock Bowers that you talk about. I feel like he's the only guy at this position, which he's not necessarily just tight end. He's hybrid. He's athlete. He's, in my opinion, what Sean Payton envisioned and did with Taysom Hill a little bit, but I think a little bit more defined, which... I mean, maybe it makes credence to what we talked about earlier. Maybe it is Brock Bowers here. But I also want to make another point, too, about all these skilled players and obviously maybe just the draft board in general. I think a lot of people, this is mock draft season in look, Broncos country. We're going to have our fair share of mock drafts. We're going to have you send your mock drafts in. But you look at the big boards, right? You look at, like, if you do a mock draft simulator, you see all the top prospects, the perceived top prospects that they have. The Broncos and every NFL team they don't necessarily have it like that, right? They assemble their big board based on their interviews, who they like, the value that they bring to the team from a positional standpoint, long-term impact, and guys will move up and down that, right? So maybe while you look at these mock draft simulators, they have all the top players there, and as the draft actually happens and that list dwindles down a little bit, people are like, well, this player here is the, the, the top player remaining on the, on the prospect board on this mock draft simulator. The reality of the situation is, Denver's board is going to be entirely different than these mock draft boards are going to look like or give us insight into. So I think that's what makes this whole exercise a little bit more fun is because we think it may go one way. It may go the entirely other way, right? And we've seen this happen before. Guys we perceive to be round one guys end up being round two guys or round three or not even that. And it depends on the position itself. To me, that's what I'm excited about. But I feel like tight end and running back, if Denver made that move a little bit in round one, if it wasn't a Brock Bowers or anything along those lines, I feel like that would be a kind of a wasted pick here. Now the other positions tight end, maybe you add that round four. I don't know, but there are some guys here and I think it's about the vision. Can this guy become what you maybe see from him, right? Not necessarily what he did at the college level. Like there's obviously sprinkles and samples of that, but can he become what you think he can at the NFL level? That's where the coaching aspect is really going to come into play here for the Broncos all these prospects in the NFL draft. And look, Broncos country, we are always eager for your feedback on today's episode of the show. Let us know your thoughts on the Broncos adding offensive arsenal around whoever is at quarterback, regardless in this year's NFL draft. That's something that we're going to break down. And look, on top of that, the conversation will continue to expand here as well. When we look at the defensive side of the ball, where are some positions in the NFL draft the Broncos can absolutely get better at? We'll take a look at that from a skill player standpoint on tomorrow's brand new episode. Locked on Broncos.